Hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. I think the title of this video speaks for itself. How can someone be so brutal and merciless with someone they love? That's Sean Diddy Combs for you. The man of the hour for the past few months and for all the wrong reasons. He's been involved in some deep legal stuff and they just keep piling up. Let's get right into it. The allegations against P. Diddy followed raids on his house that chucked the majority of his fan base. However, they may not have been all that surprising to some of the people who were close to him. Diddy has been involved in multiple lawsuits that range from all different kinds of crimes. Sexual assault, grooming, abuse, possession of drugs and transporting it, sex trafficking, you name it. Federal investigators raiding two homes owned by hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Sources telling ABC News it is connected to a human trafficking investigation. Now what we're learning about the raids being led by prosecutors with the Southern District of New York. Two of Combs' sons were briefly detained as authorities searched through Diddy's L.A. residence. The aftermath of the raid, seen in footage from TMZ. We don't know for sure if Ronnie Jones' lawsuit started off the criminal investigation, but a lot of what he said in his lawsuit seems to be investigated by the Southern District of New York. The lawsuit alleges Combs engaged in serious illegal activity, including the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. The displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms and provide- Let's look at Diddy's former employees for Bad Boy Entertainment. Combs has a history of violent and dangerous behavior toward women and his employees at Bad Boy Entertainment. According to a new report from Rolling Stone, the music mogul has yet to be charged of any of alleged crimes. But unnamed sources tell Rolling Stone and CNN that New York and federal investigators are closing in on comms, following the eight civil lawsuits filed against him since November, and the Homeland Security investigations raid of his homes in LA and Miami in March. Combs has of course denied all accusations against him. Several former Bad Boy Music label employees and sources alleged in Rolling Stone's report that Combs has a violent past that dates from before he rose to fame. Sources also corroborated claims of sexual assault and abuse in lawsuits filed by Cassie, Joy dickerson and Crystal McKinney. Music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones also sued alleging Combs groped his genitals and forced him to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs, pushed him to take drugs and stiffed him out of $50,000 for his work on the recently Grammy nominated the Love Album, Off the Grid. Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed his 70-page lawsuit in the Southern District of New York on Monday, including a cover sheet with a trigger warning for sexually explicit images, aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of sexual intercourse in minors. More allegations from former employees. Bad Boy co-founder and former president Kirk Burroughs, who was fired in 1997, and another ex-employee claimed they witnessed comms attack a woman in the office in 1994 and had to tear him off her. Felicia Newsom, former manager of Bad Boy's rec recording studio Daddy's House, added that she also had to hold Combs by his waist as he was about to beat this girl amid a fight between two women. As the success of Bad Boy grew after the murder of the notorious Big in 1997, employees claimed Combs became an overbearing boss and people needed to learn how to speak Buffy in order to remain employed. No one on his team at Bad Boy spoke back to him. No one challenged him, Newsom said. Another source said, he was so volatile, he's always on the edge of snapping and being scary. People did whatever he said to stay in his good graces. And Puffy exploited people's desires to be in those environments. Moving on to Diddy's sexual assault lawsuits. Diddy has been sued by seven different women for sexual assault, abuse, and misconduct. Let's begin with Cassie Ventura. In 2005, 20-year-old singer Cassandra Ventura scored a minor club hit in Germany with her debut single, Me and You. After hearing it, on a night out, Combs convinced Cassie to join Bad Boy Records for a 10-album deal. By that stage, Combs and Ventura were in a relationship, but in a civil lawsuit filed in December 2023, she said the mogul had used his position of power to set the groundwork for a manipulative and coercive romantic and sexual relationship. Her lawsuit included multiple graphic descriptions of violent abuse, alleging that Combs regularly beat and kicked Miss Ventura, leaving black eyes, bruises, and blood. Ventura also alleged sexual 
sexual abuse and rape, claimed that many of these incidents were witnessed by Combs, tremendously loyal network, who were not willing to do anything meaningful to stop the violence. Combs strenuously denied all the allegations and accused Ventura of trying to extort him. They settled the case a day after it was filed in New York, with Combs' lawyer saying the settlement was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Thank what a beautiful you. dress. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, I want, can't wait to see 3 a.m. Yes. The controversy. Yeah. Uh, How can we get a tape of this? Oh, I'm going to send it to you. I'm, I will email it <laughs> to email you. Email me the yes. whole thing. Yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I love that you're constantly you. crushing the glass ceiling or crushing yes, the black yes, ceiling. Yes. You're you know, one of the first. One of the first. You know, I'm, be, I'm blessed to be in this industry. And, yes. And, you're and blessed. I just try to blend it with my artistry. Yeah. And you create that. I, I'm thrilled. I want to see that like tomorrow. 8 p.m. <laughs> send it to me at 3 a.m. in the morning, okay? okay? Yeah. Joy accused the star of drugging and sexual assaulting her when she was a college student in 1991. She also claimed he recorded the attack and distributed the footage without her consent. While on a school break for the holidays in January 1991, Dickerson Neal, who was a college student at Syracuse University at the time, reluctantly agreed to dinner with Combs, the suit said. During their date, Combs had intentionally drugged Dickerson Neal, resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk, the suit alleges. Combs allegedly spiked her drink when Dickerson Neal left it, unattended to use the restroom. In Joy's filing last year, she claimed Combs videotaped the 1991 assault and distributed the tape to others in the music industry. This caused severe harm to Ms. Dickerson Neal's reputation, career prospects, and emotional well-being. A third woman, Lisa Gardner, also filed court papers accusing Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall of taking turns raping the woman and her friend in 1990 or 1991. They were coercing her into sex and then, a couple of days later, choking her so hard that she passed out. Gardner alleges she and her friend attended an event in New York hosted by a record company where they met Mr. Combs and Mr. Hall. The two men offered the pair drinks throughout the night and later invited them back to Mr. Hall's apartment where she claims she was coerced into having sex with Mr. Combs. The legal actions also alleges Mr. Combs visited Lisa's home a few days later and became violent. He was worried that Lisa's friend would tell the girl he was with at the time what he and Hall had done to them, it says. The flurry of recent lawsuits comes as the New York Adult Survivors Act, which allows alleged victims of sex crimes to sue after the statute of limitations has lapsed, ends on 24 November. The woman who filed a complaint in Hall back in November, who was at the time listed only as Jane Doe, has now amended her complaint, and now she's added further details telling her name and her age at the time of the alleged assault. In the lawsuit, she recalled how Diddy and Aaron Hall were very handsy and flirtatious with her and her friend, and this all happened at an event uh, that was hosted by MCA. They afterwards went to Aaron Hall's apartment. Uh, please pay attention. She says once she got to the apartment, she was given many more drinks, and then she was coerced into having relations with Diddy. Once he finished his business, then Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to do the same thing with him. Now, as if all of this wasn't bad enough, now this woman, whose name, by the way, is Liza Gardner, uh, she's finally put her name out there, uh, but she says that she was 16 years old when all of these things allegedly happened. Yeah, this is getting even worse. Please pay attention. And let's not forget that she had a friend with her, and she claims that uh, they did the same thing to her friend. Uh, so I'm just curious as to what age her friend was at the time that all of this happened, and if that information is going to come out. I'm pretty sure that it will. Yeah. It's pretty bad for Diddy, and it keeps getting worse day by day. Actress and model Kim Porter, who died from pneumonia in November 2018, dated Combs on and off from 1994 to 2007. They shared three children, son Christian, 26, and twin daughters Delilah Starr and Jesse James, 16. They also raised 32-year-old Quincy Brown, Porter's son with singer and record producer A.I. Beecher. Two sources claim that music mogul physically abused her, with former bad boy rapper Mark Curry adding, I remember Kim used to go through a lot of stuff. If you live around them, you get to see the toxic relationship. I think every relationship he had that I experienced around him was like that. Porter briefly dated late music executive Shakira Stewart in 2000, which his mother said led to an assault on her son. Combs left Shakira bleeding on a hotel floor in Italy. Stewart's mother, Portia, said he had to have stitches and then Combs threatened him. I'm going to kill you, she added. That's when I said you need to get out of this business. This man is crazy. 
Burroughs theorized Combs' childhood abandonment, including the murder of his father, contributed to his former co-founder's vicious cycle, and the women catch it the worst, he said. Many wonder if Kim could have gone through the same hardships as Cassandra and some even believe that she actually did, but unfortunately, dead men tell no tales. Check this out, y'all. I'm in a super mystical f now. Today is the second born day for Kim Porter. This is the day that she passed. And I'm just like in my backyard and I'm giving thanks for the time, the time that I had with her. You know what I'm saying? And today I'm gonna share with y'all a little bit of the story because it's a true black love story and it's real, you know what I'm saying? And um, I know a lot of people you are going through grief right now. And man, I ain't think I was gonna ever get up, ever be at this point today. But through the glory of God, I'm here and I'm a better man for it. And you know something? We ain't on our time, we on God's time. Lampras, who says she met him in 1994 when she was a student at New York's Fashion Institute of Technology, according to the complaint filed in New York and obtained by CNN, Lampras accuses Combs of four instances of sexual assault from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s. The suit further accuses the rap mogul of battery, assault, neglecting infliction of emotional distress in violation of the Victims of Gender-Motivated Violence Protection Law. She described several terrifying sexual encounters with him, including being forced to take ecstasy and have sex with Combs' late former girlfriend, Kim Porter. Ms. Lampras vocally opposed this idea, but Mr. Combs quickly reminded her that she had no control over the situation as he could make her lose her job, the lawsuit said. Combs, who showered her with gifts and promised to help her achieve her dreams of a career in fashion, the relationship turned abusive and coercive, according to the lawsuit. Lampras said Combs raped her in a Manhattan hotel room in 1995. She passed out and woke up the next morning, nude, sore, and confused, according to the suit. On another occasion, Lampras said Combs forced her to perform oral sex on him in a parking garage in full view of a worker at the garage. This was a Valentine's Day gift card from Diddy to April. It says, Happy Valentine's Day, love, Puffy. Now from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. Following April Lampras' lawsuit against Diddy, another model has accused Combs of drugging and sexually assaulting her in 2003, the latest in a string of allegations against the rapper and businessman. Crystal McKinney said in a lawsuit that Combs invited her to his New York studio and plied her with alcohol and marijuana until she became intoxicated. He then forced her to perform oral sex, she said. Crystal said she was an up-and-coming model when an unnamed fashion designer introduced her to Diddy at a men's fashion week event. The designer began to show Crystal's appearances off, as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive, according to the documents. At the event, McKinney said that Diddy made suggestive remarks, offered to help her career, and plied her with alcohol. He invited her to his studio the same night. Mrs. McKinney said that Combs was drinking and smoking marijuana with several other men, offering her some. Mrs. McKinney even believed that the marijuana was laced with another substance. Once she was very intoxicated, Combs led her to a bathroom room, where he forced her to perform oral sex on him, she alleged. She lost consciousness afterwards and awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment, feeling humiliated and traumatized and without recourse. She said modeling opportunities
opportunities began to decline for her and she believed Diddy used his influence to blackball her in the industry. In a tailspin of anxiety and depression, the model said she attempted suicide. Crystal said she filed the lawsuit to seek justice for herself and for any other victim of comms. Going back to the event, so McKinney goes to this event where Combs is having dinner with several people. And the complaint reads, quote, Once seated, Combs made a very public display of coming on to plaintiff in a sexually suggestive manner. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night, or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. Now, this is something that Combs has been accused of time and time again, using his power, money, influence to make things happen good or bad, but also as a way to exert control over his alleged victims. So later that night, McKinney says Combs texted her to invite her to his New York studio. She says when she got there, Combs was sitting with several men who were drinking and smoking marijuana. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. Well, that was some pretty brutal stuff. Could you believe a single man had done all these unimaginable things to all these women? And this doesn't even cover everything he has done other than the sexual assault. Man's been busy juggling music and crime. But don't worry folks, everyone eventually reaps what they sow. And Sean Diddy Combs' time is coming to an end.